Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Tavis Smiley. By this time next week, the U.S. government could be on the verge of a shutdown if members of Congress can't come to an agreement on a budget resolution. And with a presidential election season on the horizon, the stakes are awfully high. And so first up tonight, a look at what a potential government shutdown would mean for both parties and the president with Chris Saliza, political reporter for the Washington Post. Also tonight, professional surfer Bethany Hamilton and the new movie based on her real life ordeal. In 2003, Bethany lost her arm during a shark attack, you recall. But remarkably, she's back in the water as a world class surfer. She'll be joined by actress Anna Sophia Robb, who portrays Bethany in the new film, Soul Surfer. We're glad you've joined us. Chris Saliza of the Washington Post, pro surfer Bethany Hamilton, and actress Anna Sophia Robb coming up right now. All I know is his name is James, and he needs extra help with his reading. I'm James. Yes. <laughs> to everyone making a difference. Thank you. You help us all live better. Nationwide Insurance supports Tavis Smiley. With every question and every answer, Nationwide Insurance is proud to join Tavis in working to improve financial literacy and remove obstacles to economic empowerment one conversation at a time. Nationwide is on your side. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Up next, the harrowing story of professional surfer Bethany Hamilton and the new movie based on her life. You recall her, the shark attack that took off her arm. We'll talk to her in a moment. Stay with us. Bethany Hamilton is a professional surfer who made headlines around the world when she was attacked by a 14-foot tiger shark back in 2003 when she was just 13, losing her left arm in the ordeal. Not only did she survive the attack, but remarkably, she's resumed her professional career and remains a world-class competitor. In the new film about her story, Soul Surfer, love that title, Bethany is played by actress Anna Sophia Robb. The film also stars Helen Hunt and Dennis Quaid. And so here now, some scenes from Soul Surfer. <laughs> to come out here every day. <laughs> Teenage girl from the North Shore. Shark attack. Dramatic amputation. She's going into hypovolemic shock. Huh? The things that you're going to have to learn to do differently is extensive. I can't do this anymore. So what do we do now? We'll take it day by day. I don't understand. I don't know why terrible things happen to us sometimes. But I have to believe that something good is going to come out of this. I started a moment ago, Bethany, by saying that you res you've resumed your career. Uh, I think the obvious question for a lot of people is why? Why get back on that board again? Why get back in the water ever again? <laughs> Well, I mean, I grew up in Kauai, Hawaii, and um, surfing was just a huge part of my family and my life, and, and I'm just so passionate about it. And I guess my passion and love for surfing just, you know, overpowered my fear of sharks or not being able to do it. Because for me, it was like I was, you know, kind of scared of sharks, but then I was even more scared that I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And then um, once I got back out there, I just... All that fear kind of just disappeared once I got up on my first wave. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've often wondered which one you found the most challenging, um, finding your balance again um, to get back on the board or getting over the fear of getting back in the water. Um, I mean, both were very challenging. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it just, I guess determination just kind of took over me and I just really worked hard at it. I mean, I worked hard to you know, overcome that fear by just, you know, I go out there to have fun and, and try not to, like, you know, look down in the water um, <laughs> and, like, you know, be just, like, constantly, like, worried what's underneath, you yeah. know, and more just focusing on, like, the next wave that I'm going to catch. <laughs> yeah. I assume with all the technology allows us to do these days, you could, if you wanted to, um, wear a prosthetic arm. Um, you choose not to, uh, I assume, since you don't have one on today. So why not wear a prosthetic arm? 
Well, um, when it first happened, I did get a prosthetic arm, mm -hmm. and there's a scene in the movie, and it's kind of funny, because, like, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a <laughs> quirky scene um, where I ended up not liking the prosthetic arm that much, and, and in real life, I kind of did like it, but it just doesn't meet my lifestyle, and, and I'm happy with the way that I look, and I don't feel the need to have an arm to be beautiful, you know, and so I just kind of, you know, shook it off and um, figured out how to do things with one arm. <laughs> yeah. Before I go to Ana Sofia, when you say it doesn't fit your lifestyle, what do, you, what do you mean by that, the arm? Well, I mean, I'm just always in and out of the water. I'm uh -huh. running around. I'm just an active person. And, um, and then plus, my arm's really short, so, mm -hmm. like, it's hard to find a prosthetic that will really, like, you know, be a beneficial um, just to help me, you know? Yeah. So... I don't know. Yeah. Um, Ana Sofia, the, the obvious question uh, that came to mind for me when I s saw parts of the film uh, was how an actress uh, plays a role like this with your arm, I assume, tied behind your back the entire time. It's hard enough acting with two arms <laughs> <laughs> and two legs. How do you do it with an arm wrapped behind you somewhere? And how, how did you do this, by the way? Um, well, the, the prosthetic guys, they took a, like a mold of mm -hmm. Bethany's arm and... Um, and then they modeled it to fit my size. Mm -hmm. And so then I wore a prosthetic every day um, that looked just like Stumpy. And I wore a green sleeve. Um, and I just would put my arm behind my back like this. And mm -hmm. you could see it sort of it's yeah. pretty much gone. And then, um, and then we'd have to do multiple takes where my arm was lifted up. We'd call it a pit plate. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then another take where I was out of the scene so that the CGI guys could... Um, put in the background when they were taking my arm out. So it was a really long process, but um, that's one of the things in the movie that's really great is you don't, it's not distracting, mm. you know? It's not something, I was a, a bit concerned about if I was gonna see it or if it was gonna look weird, and it looks just yeah. just like that. <laughs> what, um, what, what, do you, what do you take away from um, a project like this where you're playing someone who does in fact have an arm? And I ask that because I remember being in school obviously many years ago, uh, and an exercise with a friend of mine, we blindfolded ourselves for like half a day mm -hmm. to try to get an understanding of the experience, what it's like to be blind. Right. And after just, you know, an hour, I was just, I was undone. Right. I couldn't even figure, I couldn't even finish out the half day exercise because it yeah. troubled me so much that I couldn't see for even an hour. Mm -hmm. So you're an actress and you're playing a role, but what do you take away on a, on a personal level from having the feeling of being one-armed for a good part of that filming? Well, I guess um, Bethany does more things with her one arm than I do with my two. I mean, she, like, helps me carry stuff when I'm, like, fumbling and around. <laughs> so I think what it mainly made me realize is that you can conquer all things and that, you know, Bethany doesn't look at it as a dis um, disability. It's she, she looks at it as you know, this kind of catalyst that she can um, share her story and inspire people. And I guess what it made me realize is that it depends on the individual and what they do with their circumstances. And this, um, you know, it, it could be just a challenge or this um, unfortunate event. You can turn it into a positive thing or you can just go, oh, this is ruining my life. This is so hard. Why am I not like everyone else? And the beautiful thing is, is that she's not like everyone else. And, and looking at my life, it's like you've seen, like, you know, it seems like such a terrible thing. And so many people are like, why would God allow, like, so, something like this to happen to, like, a 13-year-old girl that's, like, has these dreams that are just um, beautiful. And, and then all of a sudden, it just seems as if it's shattered. Um, but looking at my life now, like, so much good has come out of it, and I, I've been able to encourage people through my story, and I'm still a pro surfer to, to this day, and I travel, like, six months of the year just competing and, and going on surf trips, and, and then with the movie coming out, it's just, it's been incredible. Yeah. Since you raised it, um, as I say, God and your faith, faith is an important part of this movie. Yeah. Obviously an important part of your life and your family's life. Tell me the role that faith has played in, in, in this process of getting you to where you are today. Um, well, when I was about five, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and since then, it's just been a stronghold in my life, and really through the shark attack and all the hard times that my family and I went through, it gave us unity and, and perseverance to push through all this, like, crazy stuff that we never knew was going to happen, and, um, and, uh, just being able to, um, have a good outlook on life and, and have a positive, 
um, perspective on things has really just been really encouraging to share with other people. You mentioned a moment ago um, that, you, that many people have asked you over the years how God could allow something like this to happen. Um, again, that's your statement about what other people have asked. Let me ask you honestly, you and your family, whether or not at a certain point in time you question God. If you did, I'm okay with that because in the Bible, you know, since, we, since we're talking about the Bible here, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he doesn't want to go to the cross. He's yeah. begging, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I do not want to go to the cross. So Jesus Christ himself is questioning God. So I think it's okay to do that sometime to get clarity, get understanding. I say all that to ask whether or not if at any point in time, given even the strength of your faith, you question God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Yeah, I mean, God really just gave me a sense of peace through everything, and I was able to just go to Him, and, you know, I did question Him, but my question was more like, God, like, why did you allow this to happen, and what can we do now? Like, mm -hmm. what are we going to do from here? And, and not just, like, dwell on what happened and, like, um, just have a pity party or whatever, so... It's been just an amazing just journey. And yeah. the amazing part is is that in the movie we actually had to tone it down mm -hmm. because Bethany in the hospital, she was up going, like, I'm ready to get back in the water. I wanna I wanna continue. I'm not gonna make this a bad thing. Which most people when they're like, No, this mm -hmm. is the time, you know, you're in the hospital, you should be feeling bad for yourself. <laughs> so in reality she's sitting there going, reading the script going, What? I was actually I was doing okay. You know, I was playing with balloons and they were like, but we have to make it, you know, a little bit stronger <laughs> so you have that arc. <laughs> yeah, we, we need some grief here, Bethany. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of grief here. <laughs> yeah, um, when, when, when Anna Sophia suggested a moment ago um, with the use of this word catalyst that this was, in fact, something that was a springboard for you, uh, it's been a catalyst for what? Um, I guess just it's given me so many opportunities just to um, go on amazing trips like I went to Thailand and with World Vision and um, got to encourage like you know help these this young group of kids um, especially just overcome their fear of the ocean and um, you know after the tsunami and mm -hmm. it was just an amazing opportunity and and just sh writing my book and making a documentary and now Soul Surfer it's just reaching so many people and more than I ever could have imagined and you know yeah it's just it's been amazing just to be able to really um, touch people in, in ways I never would have thought of myself. Yeah. I'm always fascinated by actors who have to play roles of people who are alive uh -huh. and Bethany is very much alive. Yes, uh, so, very much. So how do you embody all of this when the person's on the set watching what you're doing? Well, um, I remember when I came down, but before we even started pre-production, mm -hmm. I went straight to Kauai and, um, and surfed with Bethany, and I had her book, and I had, <laughs> had it had, like... Had you surfed prior to playing this role? I had had a two-hour surf lesson okay. um, with my dad in California, and if you surf, you know that is not really anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I went down to Kauai, and I had her book, the Soul Surfer mm -hmm. book, and it was just like tripled in size because I had annotated it and sticky notes and questions and I just wanted to <laughs> study her and, and, and get into her mind and, you know, and just be, become Bethany, you know, and, and do my best. And, and then I realized that, you know, she's a real person. We became real friends and like, and good friends and that the key to it was just hanging out with her and, and getting just her vibes, mm -hmm. this, this kind of surf vibe and this, um, <laughs> And also, I guess, developing a, a love for the ocean, yeah. which is at her heart. I mean, that's what she puts out. And because of surfing and training, we trained for six weeks before we started filming. I just, I have such a love for the ocean. And obviously, I'm not going to be a pro surfer or even close to that. But I love getting out there. I love paddling. And it's just, I think it's a love for something greater than yourself. And um, surfing's a moment where you are focused on one thing and it's not even what you're doing, it's what the earth is doing and the, yeah. the ocean around you. Great place to close. So, Bethy, how, how is the professional career coming along? Uh, it's going really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the movie, it's been a little bit of a distraction, but um, Just a little bit. I'm kind <laughs> of excited to, like, you know, get the movie out there and move mm -hmm. on with my surfing and keep just doing my best to become the best surfer that I can be. Yeah, it's a great distraction. Uh, Dennis Quaid and Helen Hunt have both been guests here. I love Helen Hunt. So when you see her again, tell her I said hello. Yeah, we, we love, will. We love her around here. The movie's called Soul Surfer, the story of Bethany Hamilton starring 
Uh, Miss Anna Sophia, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all the best on the project. And Thank uh, get you. back in the water as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, keep the faith. For more information on today's show, visit Tavis Smiley at pbs.org. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. Join me next time with author Gail Samak Lamont on her new bestseller, The Dressmaker of Carcana, plus a performance from Raphael Sadiq. That's next time. We'll see you then. All I know is his name is James, and he needs extra help with his reading. I'm James. Yes. <laughs> to everyone making a difference. Thank you. You help us all live better. Nationwide Insurance supports Tavis Smiley. With every question and every answer, Nationwide Insurance is proud to join Tavis in working to improve financial literacy and remove obstacles to economic empowerment one conversation at a time. Nationwide is on your side. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.